Lake Chapel Church. I will enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise and be thankful unto him and bless his name. Come on and let's bless the name of the Lord. Happy Resurrection Sunday. Welcome into the house of the Lord. You who are online and here in the building, this is the day the Lord has made, and we are already rejoicing. Those of us who were at the 6 a.m. worship service, we got a word, and we had a wonderful time of worship. Here we gather at 9 again with the rest of you, everybody online and in the building, and we have come to celebrate our Lord. This is the best day on the calendar for us every year because this solidifies what we say we believe. So can we take the next 30 seconds and just literally celebrate and cheer and applaud and thank our God for this great day, this resurrection day. Come on, let's just rejoice. Rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say rejoice. Come on, rejoice. Rejoice because of his goodness. Rejoice for his mercy. Rejoice because he's a great God. Rejoice because of the great power that we as a church possess in the resurrection of our Lord. I want to welcome you this morning. It's my pleasure to just stand before you. We're going to have a marvelous time here in the sanctuary. I want you to get ready. Can I borrow the famous three, two words that's repeated three times from you know who? Get ready, get ready, get ready. Tell the people around you, get ready, get ready, get ready. Get ready for a move of God. Get ready for a shift in your life. Get ready for what is to come. How many of you know God is gonna do something great in your life? Not just your life, but in the life of his people. So let's pray together. Father, we thank you for this great day, and we honor you, and we welcome your presence into the sanctuary. We ask you to rest on us today. Kiss us with your favor. Confirm your power. Confirm it to us by touching us. Help us to sense you in this place. Change lives today. Let somebody ask the most important question, what must I do to be saved? Let somebody get lifted in the spirit. Those whose hearts are broken, may they be mended today. Those who are in need of a miracle, may they find it today. May all things be manifested to confirm this power that we say we possess in this sanctuary and not just this sanctuary, but we pray for our brothers and sisters, our sister churches around the state, the country, and even the world as we are gathering to honor this great day. May there be a shift in the whole atmosphere. May the whole earth groan and make noise and shout aloud the praises of our God around the world. May it be lifted up to the throne of heaven. And may we be partakers and, part and, and recipients of this great thing that you're doing. And we will forever give you all the glory and all the praise and all the honor. In Jesus' mighty name I pray. Amen, amen, and amen. Now listen, I know y'all going to leave out of here today and watch that important basketball game. I heard a big one is coming today. That's the noise I need for Jesus, that right there, that, yeah, what y'all just did, that's what I need right there. Yeah, 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 yeah. Come on, lift them up, lift them up. We can't do it enough today. In Jesus' name, amen, amen, amen. Praise the Lord, Wake Chapel. Praise the Lord, Wake Chapel. He's worthy of all glory, all honor, and all praise. Amen. So your worship art, drama, media, all of your ministries have curated a worship experience for you today that we want you to be fully immersive in this experience. We don't want any spectators. We want you to feel the highs of hallelujah. Can you all say hallelujah? Hallelujah. That's the high of Hosanna. We also want you to feel the groaning of the pain and the agony. Let me hear you say, mm. We also want you to be a part of the victory. So let's practice a little bit. 
If we lift our hands, let me see you lift your hands. Let me see you clap your hands. Hallelujah. Let me see you command your feet to give him some praise. Can you, can you pick them up and put them down? We want you to have the entire experience today. So from the highs of Hosanna to the lows of the agony of defeat, and then we want you to experience the glorious resurrection of our Savior. In Jesus' name, we believe you're going to join in with us today. Is that all right, Wake Chapel? Is that all right, Wake Chapel? Let's give him praise.
Now there was a man named Joseph, a member of the council, a good and upright man who had not consented to their decision and action. He came from the Judean town of Arimathea, and he was waiting for the kingdom of God. Going to Pilate, he asked for Jesus' body. Then he took it down, wrapped it in linen cloth, and placed it in a tomb cut in the rock, one in which no one had yet been laid. It was preparation day, and the Sabbath was about to begin. The woman, Mary Magdalene, Mary mother of John and others, who had come from come with Jesus from Galilee, followed Joseph and saw how the tomb, his body was laid in it. Then they went home and prepared spices and perfumes, but they rested on the Sabbath in obedience to the commandment. When they crucified my Lord, were you there? When they crucified my Lord, oh, sometimes it causes me to tremble, tremble. Were you there when they crucified my Lord? The next day, the one after preparation day, the chiefs, priests, and Pharisees went to Pilate. Sir, they said, we remember that while he was still alive, that deceiver said, after three days I will rise again. So give the order for the two to be made secure until the third day. Otherwise, his disciples may come and steal the body and tell people that he has been raised from the dead. This last deception will be worse than the first. Take a guard, Pilate answered. Go, make the tomb as secure as you know how. So they went and made the tomb secure by putting a seal on the stone and posting the guard.
And a man raise himself up from the dead and once again be amongst the land of the living. Is it possible for one man to roll the stone away for his tomb by himself? If none of this is possible, then why are we here? Surely, someone must have come here before us and taken the body away. Hallelujah, praise God. Amen, he got up. He got up, and because he got up, we are here today. Just take a moment and give our God some praise. What a mighty God. He rose for us. He rose for you. <laughs> what a mighty God. What a mighty God we serve. Amen. It is giving time, Wake Chapel. Malachi 3 and 10 said, Bring ye all the tithes into the storehouse, that there might be meat in my house. And prove me now herewith, saith the Lord of hosts. Will I not open you the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing that there shall not be room enough to receive it? Mm. Oh, Lord. <sighs> you have to excuse me. But when I think of the goodness of Jesus. Woo! Oh. Here at Wake Chapel, there are numerous ways to give, and they should be displayed on the screen. Amen. If you're not standing, I ask you to stand at this time for our offertory centers, which is taken from Nehemiah 4 and 6, NIV version, and let us say it together. So we rebuilt the wall till all of it reached half its height, for the people worked with all their hearts. Continue to remain standing and follow the directions of our ushers.
my Lord away. And he's going, please tell me where you've taken them. <laughs> Woman, why are you crying? Who is it that you're looking for? Sir, they have taken my Lord away. Please tell me where they have taken him, and I will go get him. Mary. <laughs> Ramona! <laughs> Do not hold on to me, for I have not yet returned to my father. Go instead to my brothers and tell them I am returning to my God and to their God, to my father and to your father. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, I am sending you. Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive anyone's sins, their sins are forgiven. If you do not forgive, they are not forgiven. Unless I see the nail marks in his hands and put my fingers where the nails were and put my hand into his side, I will not believe. Peace be with you. Put your finger there. Come, reach your hand and touch my side. Stop doubting and believe. My Lord and my God. Because you have seen me, you believe. Blessed are those that have not seen and yet have believed. All authority and power has been given unto me. Therefore, go, baptizing all nations and teaching them the commands that I've given to you. And surely, I will be with you always, even unto the end of the age. Lord, you're worthy of my praise. I stand here in awe of your beauty and your love. I'm standing. Give 
unending glory.
Thank you, Jesus. Let the worship continue. Amen. Amen. Woo. Woo. Hallelujah. He lives, and because he lives, I can face tomorrow. Because he lives, all fear is gone. Hallelujah. I wasn't sure if they were finished. I wanted to leave room in case they had some more for us. Can we praise God for our worship arts this morning? Thank you all for making us laugh and remember and worship and uh one of our new disciples was jesus amen he was the perfect jesus amen <laughs> where is he did he go out we'll, we'll grab him when he comes back in so he can take his proper bow amen let's um greet our online family let's greet one another in the spirit of worship come on Hallelujah. Just greet one another. Welcome somebody in. Well, happy Resurrection Sunday again. I pray you're being ministered to. We expect God to do more, so don't you go anywhere. Happy Resurrection Sunday. Amen. May be seated in his presence amen it's good to see everybody here today dressed up and dressed down amen <laughs> whatever you do whatever you chose you're looking good in the house of God today I'm excited just in love with Jesus I've just had a really interesting um, worshipful week I want to take a moment and acknowledge and thank uh, our teams and everybody who made this week special for Wake Chapel Church. Let's thank our deacons for leading our morning prayer. Wasn't it amazing? Can we praise God for them? Those of you who tuned in. And then those of you who missed Thursday night, I just need to tell you, you shouldn't miss anything at Wake Chapel Church. Our elders preached the paint, the paint on and off the walls. They were all amazing, and they did it in a spirit of love and unity. You didn't feel any comp competition. They supported one another. It was just amazing, and I'm just honored to be part of a body of people that flow in such a manner. And then, of course, on Good Friday, the sanctuary was open for you. So I believe the Lord is pleased with Wake Chapel Church that we took our time and honored our Holy Week and our resurrection of our Lord. I'm using some discipline. If, if you, you know, we had 6 a.m. was wonderful today. We really did have a good time. We had a prophetic word. Those of you who were here, tell somebody who wasn't here, uh, I'm going to get more than I expected. Amen. That's all I can tell you. I can't tell you. I can't tell you the details. You should have been here, but I'm getting more than I expected. But, whew, yeah. I'm going to read the Bible today. It was already read as part as it was the narration for the, for the program, but I'm going to read through it again in just a moment as we talk about what I believe the Lord has laid on my heart for this Resurrection Sunday. I think the kids are having an Easter egg hunt after this, right? So where are they going to be so I can jack, up, jack some eggs from somebody? Where are they going to be? LEC? All right. And tell them now, guard your bags, because I'm coming. Amen. Um, but in the meantime, we're praying for uh, Sister Amber, Jasmine, Daniel, Lavanda, Applewhite, Ali Hickman, Ariston Gorham, Rosalind Parchment, 
Percy Lee Smith, Jr. And we have some bereavements. Our disciple, Kimberly Harrell, in the passing of her father, Robert McCanns, Jr. And disciple, Wilbur, Wilbur Harvey, in the passing of his brother, William Harvey. So please be aware and take note of those prayer requests, even if you don't remember their names. Just ask God to bless those people that are on the prayer request list. And we stand with them in prayer that God will do whatever it is they're asking for in Jesus' name. All right, so today I'm going to talk to you, and I'm going to be brief, I think. Um, we'll see. We've been getting out of here pretty late. <laughs> but I think these shoes say we, I'm going to be brief, praise God. <laughs> they telling me to be brief, praise the Lord. They're like, hurry up and sit yourself down, ma'am. Praise God. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Uh, but anyway, they do flow. All right. So I was thinking about something, um, and it sort of triggered this message today um, that we'll just talk through. And I really want to talk, and I really want to have us all leave with some clarity about some things. And then I want to pray for a, a group of people. Thank you, Ban. Always amazing. Amen. Those of you who travel, you, if you travel frequently, you um, have found the quick way through the airport. You can do TSA pre-check, and now they have something called clear. You can avoid some of the lines. Um, if you take advantage of these opportunities to pass through a little quicker. But with this opportunity comes um, some verification. There's got to be proof that you are who you say you are. So you're taken through a bit of rigor to confirm that you're who you say you are so that they can trust you to travel through without, with minimal um, security checking because you've been verified that this is who you say you are. Some of you work in organizations, especially some of you who work with children other places, you have to uh, go through a rigorous plan and has to be clear, you know, background check, they check in that you, you are who you say you are, we need a birth certificate, we need proof of your identity. It must be proven that you are who you say you are. And specifically, in so many other places of life, there's got to be verification of your identity you can't get a driver's license, you can't get a passport. And it begins with your beginning. It begins with a birth certificate. Um, I remember my mom had a family member who needed something. And at the time that they were born, and many of you have grandparents and parents, depending on your age, but not too far in our past, black people, many were born, there was no hospital. So no legal record other than somebody writing it in a Bible or an auntie or somebody having to confirm that this person was born on this day. But there had to be a verification of your existence. Now, um, even Instagram, you know, they, you can buy your little verification check if you think you're really, really important and a lot of people are looking for you. Um, you could just buy the check and just put it there because people were creating fake pages of other people, pretending and posing to be who, would, who they were not. We've learned over time that the verification process, though it be rigorous, is necessary because that process gives you confidence that this person who says they are who they are are who they say they are. When we talk about the resurrection of Jesus Christ, Oftentimes, we are talking about it from a worshipful, fanciful, imaginative place where we are celebrating a concept. Many Christians celebrate a concept of resurrection and probably wrestle in private as to whether or not they even really believe it. It's, 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 it's something to really come to terms with to actually say that you believe a human being died, was buried, and without any assistance, no defibrillators, no doctors, no drugs, actually got up. I don't know if you're aware, 
But there is a scientific experiment going on right now somewhere in the world. I'm not certain where it is, but I'm sure Dr. Google will tell you about it if you look it up. There are a group of people that are trying to find a way to stop dying before they die. Just before they die, they are asking to be frozen. Because once you are pronounced legally dead, you are dead. So their request is, just before I'm legally dead, freeze me. Because they want to be around when medical science, they believe that medical science will eventually come up with something so that we won't die. I thought that was interesting, creepy, all at the same time. Um, first of all, I don't want to wake up in the world of tomorrow. I'm having enough trouble with the world of today. <laughs> I don't know what it's going to be like 30 years from now. I'm trying to reconcile all that I see. And so when you think about the, the importance of verification, and verification is so important that um, I note that when I'm at the airport going somewhere, and they, they request that I prove to them that I am who I say that I am, um, there's many means that they do that. Sometimes they want to see my eyeballs. And I know y'all are scared to, to give people your eyeballs and your fingerprints, but they have them already. I just want to tell you that. <laughs> every time you look in your phone, every time you touch it, they already got you. You already, you already, you've been got. But somebody can be standing right next to you. They can be traveling with you. They can have a ticket to the same destination. They can want to go to where you're going. They can be... Uh, excited about your destination, but unless they go through the same process that you have gone through, they will not be allowed to pass through with you. You have to have this for yourself, by yourself. I want to put a little side note right there for folks who go to church, who come to church, who hang around church, who like church. Hanging around people who go to church who love God, who serve God, um, walking with them won't get you in. <laughs> you got to walk with the one who made the way. <laughs> you could be close to it, but you need your own experience. And so I want to talk to you today about the verified Jesus. The verified Jesus. I want us to simply read the Bible together. Again, it was already depicted for you, but let's just do it with a different tone. Um, I was quite tickled at um, the disciples who were here when they passed out when Jesus came in. And I thought to myself, if they had been Afro-African disciples, not Middle Eastern disciples, that's exactly what it would have looked like. Because our people tend to be quite demonstrative. But let's just, and you can read it again on your own time. I want to be your reader. I want to read it to you. And then we're going to talk about the verified Jesus. It would be one thing to have this imagination about this fairy tale thing, this event that happened. And it would give me some goosebumps and make me feel a little fun and happy. But when I really take my time and think about this, it makes more sense. Luke chapter 23, verses 50 through 56. It says, now, behold, there was a man named Joseph. You saw him standing here in his robe a few minutes ago. A council member, a good and just man. He had not consented to their decision and deed. He was from Arimathea, a city of the Jews, who himself was also waiting for the kingdom of God. This man went to Pilate and asked for the body of Jesus. Then he took it down. Please take note of every sentence that I read to you because it's going to matter. Then he took it down, wrapped it in linen, and laid it in a tomb that was hewn out of a rock where no one had ever lain before. That day was the preparation and the Sabbath drew near. And the women who had come with him from Galilee followed after, and they observed the tomb and how his body was laid. 
Then they returned and prepared spices and fragrant oils, and they rested on the Sabbath according to the commandment. He took the body down, he wrapped it in linen, and he laid it in a tomb that was hewn, and cut out, here we go, a cut out stone was cut out of the rock, and they laid the body there. This portion of text, and of course, if you enjoy um, running through the Bible, you already know that this is recorded for us in the Gospels, Synoptic Gospels, and John adding different details to the story. Our uh, Pastor Julian did a wonderful job. Everybody did a wonderful job, but I was particularly um, blessed by his dissection of the, the text when he was preaching the other night. And so you made me work a little harder today, praise God. <laughs> Just messing with you. But um, it was, we must note here that this isn't somebody's um, made up story. This is historical data. This happened. There was a man with this name in this city at this time. Also, pay attention when, you, when you're getting anything that has historical elements to it. You are looking for certain details that confirm truth. There are details in that one little paragraph that give us glimpses into the truth of the story. He talks about the date. It's, it's the Sabbath. It's Passover. It's, it's naming a specific time period, what's going on, where we are. He's, he's being clear about who this plot belonged to. And that's not uncommon even today. How many of you, if your grandparents, somebody bought a plot? And I know my aunt and uncle bought a plot, and then my brother died before, and so my aunt gave the plot to my brother. So it's not uncommon for somebody to already have a grave, right, and then give it away to somebody else. So this is what's happening here. He already has this. This belongs to him, and he's, he's so moved by what they've done to Jesus Christ that he says, give me, this, give me the body. Let me have it. Let me at least honor him in death. Now, this man didn't know what was coming. No, no, none of them did. They had heard what Jesus said. But remember, we're seeing this in hindsight. They, they, they didn't really know what was coming. And so they, they wrapped the body. That's very important to consider. Some of you have seen on television in your history books, in Egyptian history, where the mummified bodies, this was the custom of their times to wrap the bodies. These details matter. That he was asked, can I take him down from the cross? Can I wrap his body? And can I bury him in my tomb? Goes on to say that the ladies, and I'm telling y'all, the ladies who were crying in this depiction of that said, Lord, they still crying when they came out the third time? I said, they ought to be finished crying by now, but they just cried the whole time. Praise God for the criers. But here in the text, these ladies were following because they were going to prepare the spices and the oils to, to do what they would do as is their custom to come and put it on the body. Then we jump over to John chapter 20. Verses 16 through 18, we kind of move quickly to where we saw them standing here today. And Jesus said to Mary, she turned to him and said, Rabboni, which is to say teacher. Jesus said to her, don't cling to me, for I have not yet ascended to my father. But go to my brethren and say to them, I am ascending to my father and your father. And go to my God and your God. Mary Magdalene came and told the disciples that she had Catch this word here, that she had seen the Lord and had spoken. He had spoken things to her. This is after the account of Matthew where the ladies come back to the tomb, right? Matthew chapter 28, chapter 20. Matthew chapter 28, I think it is. They come back to the tomb looking for Jesus and he's not there. This is after that. Jesus has been taken down from the cross. He's been wrapped. He's been buried. The ladies come back looking for him. He's 
Now, we had a, a Victoria's Secret angel, Charlie's angel today, but I don't think that's what the angel looked like <laughs> in heaven. The day of the, th the, day the throne, <laughs> the stone was rolled away. I don't think. Anyway, y'all pray for me because it's just what it is. You get what you get when you get me. Praise God. But uh, had to be a, a powerful moment for them to walk up and there's this person being thing standing in front of them saying he's not here. Because you're saying someone is not here that has been wrapped and buried. So there's got to be a lot of questions. Who unwrapped them? Not just who rolled away the stone, but who got all the wrapping off of him? How did he get out of that? How did he get out of this situation? Who did this? And Mary, who is also a real person, this is real data, this is real history, goes and tells a group of men at his word, I saw him. Let me tell you something. A hundred years from now, should the Lord tarry and this, worth, this earth continues, somebody somewhere in your bloodline will tell somebody that they saw you. It will be confirmed that you walked the earth for some reason. There will be, your signature will be somewhere. A photo of you will be somewhere. Something that pertains to you will live beyond your existence. We have record in text that Jesus was here. But now what we're taking a look at is we're verifying that he rose. Because somebody saw him. And seeing him and knowing him and knowing his voice, all of us have a distinct voice. None of us sound, sound the same. Our voices are different. You know people without seeing them. You, 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 oh, that's so-and-so. I hear her voice. I hear his voice. Mary initially didn't recognize him because she wasn't expecting to see him. But the distinct sound of his voice was undeniable. This is powerful because we're verifying Jesus, that he actually got up. A human being is standing somewhere and taps on the shoulder. Oh, my God, it's you. And he's, no, no, no. Don't touch me. Don't come too close because I'm not who I was the last time you saw me. But that's a whole different sermon. You have spiritual encounters that will change you forever. And people will think that you are the same. And they don't realize that you have been changed. <laughs> they have no idea what God has done in your life. In fact, I like bumping into people from 30 and 40 and 50 years ago because that's all they remember. But you have no idea what God has done in the dark. Because it was in the darkness of the tomb that that wrapping came off. <laughs> we don't know how the wrapping came off. We don't know if Jesus busted out of it. We don't know if he rolled around on the floor. All we know is that he left the wrapping in the tomb and he got so she says to the disciples, I've seen him, and he's spoken to me. She runs and tells the others, there's always somebody in the bunch who doesn't believe a thing. So John 20, 24 goes on to say, now Thomas, called the twin, one of the 12, was with them when Jesus came. The other disciples therefore said to him, we have seen the Lord. So now we've got how many people have seen him? We've got the Marys that have seen him. We've got Peter that has seen him. The rest of the 11, 10, after Judas is gone, is not 12 anymore. They have all seen him. So if we take Thomas out of the equation and Peter out of the equation, it's about uh, nine of them that hasn't seen him yet. Um, then they see him. And then Thomas hasn't seen him. And Thomas says, I don't believe none of it. But I'm actually thankful for Thomas. Because Thomas is the one who helps us to really get this truth in mind. I never, let me tell you something. I like working with people who don't buy into anything too fast. People who make emotional decisions usually regret them. You know, you meet somebody and say, I know the Lord, the Lord put us together. And then six months later, y'all fighting and carrying on and cussing and screaming. You take a job too quick. You do things, we do things too quick. Thomas wasn't just going to get excited because they said they saw him. 
Thomas said, I don't believe it until I see him myself. But here's the thing about Jesus. He wasn't upset about that. Jesus is never upset about people who don't believe in him. We don't need to be upset about it either. <laughs> because he knows how to prove himself to whomever he wants to prove himself to whenever he's ready to prove himself. And so he says to Thomas, go ahead, touch my hand. You don't believe it's me? Let's read it. One of the 12 was with him. Now, I know y'all wanted to jump and scream and stuff today. But we're not screaming. And I see some of y'all falling asleep, but it's okay. <laughs> I'm going to press through this message with your sleep and all. Because I got to verify Jesus. <laughs> it's okay. You stayed up too late last night, you know. You know, those old preachers back in the day, they were mean. They would call your name out. They'd be, sister, wake up. Wake up, tell, tap her on the shoulder. You know, I'm not going to be mean like that. But there's some people right over here in this section. <laughs> right, right in this little area right here. I didn't look over there, so I didn't look at anybody. <laughs> look at them all. Is it I? Is it I? Is it I? <laughs> is it me, Lord? <laughs> I'm almost done. <laughs> now Thomas called the twin. One of the twelve was not with them. And Jesus said, the other disciples therefore said to him, we have seen him. We have seen the Lord. So he said to them, unless I see his hands and the nail prints on my finger and put my own finger in there, unless I put my hand in his side, I will not believe, period. So I give grace to anybody who doesn't believe this story. Because it's hard to believe this. And if we tell the truth, if, if, I'm, I keep telling y'all, if you believe it too easy, I'm worrying about your belief. Because we need to wrestle with something like this. Uh, and so after eight days, his disciples were gone again. And Thomas was with them. And here comes Jesus. Jesus comes, the doors being shut, and stood in the midst and said, peace to you. He walked through the wall. How did he get in there? <laughs> He said, Thomas, I just want to make an entrance just for you. <laughs> the, so he comes in the door, he walks in there, and he says, put your hand in here. Put your hand in here. Thomas puts his hand there, puts it everywhere. And Thomas answered and said to him, my Lord, you know, he was his teacher. So he understood him as Lord, teacher, rabbi. But he added here, my God. Because there is no way now you can just be my Lord and you've gotten up from the dead, you clearly are also my God. Thomas saw for me what I didn't see. So it's just like the people at the airport, they have not seen my birth certificate. They don't, they don't know my mom and dad. They don't know what city I was born in. But they trust that I have been verified by someone who does know. And so while I didn't live in this time and I didn't see Jesus myself and I wasn't in the room when he busted through the walls and I didn't see any of that, I will take their word for it that this happened. I take this as verification. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verses 7 and 8 says, After that he was seen by James and then all the apostles, and the last of all he was seen by me also. This is Paul talking as one born out of due time. Long after all of these events occurred, after all of that, the apostle Paul is going around killing people. He's killing anybody who said they believed in Jesus Christ. The apostle Paul, the guy who we dance about his words and we are excited about his imprisonments and how Jesus did all these things for him. Do you realize that his first encounter with Jesus was a spiritual encounter with a resurrected Lord? And when he says, I have also seen him, he is not talking about seeing like the 12 in the flesh he is talking about having an amazing and unusual encounter that could not have been anybody but God. He's on his way to kill people. He's doing what he does. And something knocks him off of a beast and makes him go blind. And he's asking questions. What is this that's going on around me? And he says, I'm Jesus, the one you crucified. He says, that's who I am. And if you don't believe it, Thomas, here's some things I'm, I mean, uh, uh, Paul, here's some things I'm going to tell you. I'm going to tell you how long you're going to be blind. I'm going to tell you what city I want you to go to. I'm going to tell you whose house I want you to go when you get there. I'm going to tell that person that you're coming. There will be no way that you can make up a story like this. This would have to be God. 
1 Corinthians 15, 17 through 23. And if Christ is not risen, your faith is futile. You are still in your sins. Then also those who have fallen asleep in Christ have perished in this life. If we have only hope, we are men who are pitiful. But now Christ is risen from the dead. There is no question in my mind if he lives. The Bible also goes on to say in these same passages that 500 people saw him after his resurrection. 500 people saw him. If I, I don't know. It could be 500 people in here today. If, if 500 of y'all stood at that gate on your way out and somebody was there with a microphone and a news thing and they say, was there a woman in there by the name of Pastor Sharon Dean preaching in a pink dress? And you say, yes, I saw her. And five, 500 people leave this place right now and say you saw me? Why would somebody believe you didn't? 500 people saw Jesus after his resurrection. He has been verified. I want to give you permission today to silence all of your doubt. He, he eased up on them. He came little at a time. And I love the fact that it is recorded in scripture that he was wrapped, that he was wrapped. Because his death and the verification of his burial is the only confirmation that we have of the resurrection. <laughs> oh my God. I like, I like knowledge. I don't know. Some people get bored with it, but this is good for me. Because the Lord has given me a mandate in 2024. He said, skip the fancy titles. Skip the fancy messages. Just preach the gospel. Amen. Listen to me. Because... I, I, I've started unfollowing some people on Instagram because it's not good for my mental health. No, I'm serious. Because the church, in some components of it, has become such a circus. It's a circus. Bells and whistles and this and that and playing and things that should be perceived as holy or, or seen as jokes and the competitive nature that I feel among the brethren where we are in some ways trying to have the greater earthly kingdom. That if my little earthly kingdom in my part of town, I've got to make sure that your kingdom over there is not greater than my kingdom. I've got to make sure that, that we understand that we got to, we, we've got to do what we've got to do. But when you understand the death and the burial of Jesus Christ, and you can verify it in Scripture that one person saw him, and then two, and then 11, and the doubter being in 11, and then 500 more. All these people saw him, and then the Apostle Paul has this divine encounter with him. I don't need to wrestle with that. What I need to take ownership of is the fact that he said, if I would die with him, then I would be resurrected in his power. And I'm talking about this earthly power that we have access to here on the earth. And if I could somehow remember that I am partakers of him and fellowshipping with him in his suffering, which means that my Christianity doesn't make me believe that everything is going to be good all the time and everything is going to be perfect and nobody's ever going to get sick and nothing's ever going to go wrong and nobody's ever going to go broke and ceil uh, ceilings are not going to want to fall and insurance companies are not going to want to pay and things are going to go crazy around the world, then I am mistaken because everything that Christ did is for my eternal security. It is not for me to be happy in this life. It is for me to find joy in this life in Christ Jesus. That means that whatever is going on in this life, good or bad, Pastor Julian, I'm supposed to find joy in serving him. And while it is not my desire to ever sound like I'm fighting anybody else because I'm not fighting anybody, I'm just taking ownership of what I believe the mandate is for me. And it would, it, listen, 35 years of preaching, 
it's just easy for me to come in here today and, and be excited and get loud. I can do that. That's part of my expression of worship. And I can tell you to turn to your neighbor. And I can tell you everything that God's going to do in your life. And I do believe he's going to do those things. But today, I need to tell you that Jesus has been verified. And I need for you to know that so that you can stand in the face of every enemy that tries to stop you, that tries to tell you that there is no freedom in Christ Jesus, that tries to convince you that serving him isn't worth it. I can tell you that if he had enough power to get up out of a grave for me and you, then why can't I believe that this same Jesus can be resurrected? Resurrected in my life. That every opposing spirit loses its wind when it comes into my presence. It may be coming at me with great force, but the closer it gets to me, it becomes subject to the power of an almighty God, and it has no force. It can't stand up against the power of the resurrection. I can't stand it. There is no demonic power that can have me or you when you understand this. Because the, the only thing, here's the thing. He made it too easy. I think he made it so easy, it's too easy. All I have to do is believe it. All I have to do is believe. See, the reason why some things come upon you all, it's not because Jesus doesn't love you. It's because you don't know who you are. And you don't know that you have the authority to tell some things. No, you got to back up off of me. You're going to back up off of me. You're going to back up off my family. You're going to back up off my money. You're going to back up off my mind. You're going to back up off this church. You're going to back up off of God's people. You will not continue to harass me because I know who I am. I am a believer in the one Lord, the one Savior, and the one baptism. And anybody who believes on him shall be saved. If you confess it with your mouth and believe it in your heart. How many people here have made that confession and have that belief? Then you just need to know that there is no weapon that can be formed against you that can prosper. Every foul thing is under your feet, under your tired feet, your aching feet, your bunion feet, whatever kind of feet you have. The enemy is under your feet. I don't stand uh, in the house of God because I think anything of myself. I stand in the house of God because I think so much of the one who saved me. I stand because I believe what I'm talking about. And like the Apostle Paul, how many of you have had a moment where this same Jesus came to your rescue, came to your bedside, came to your courtroom, came into the doctor's office, came and gave you favor somewhere. He showed up for you. I can testify that Jesus is alive and it has been verified. It's a blue check next to his name. I am that I am. I am the first and the last. I was at the beginning. I am the same and I will be here in the end. In me there is no time. There is no space. I am God. I made myself flesh so that I could help you, so that I could walk with you, so that I can let you know who you can become. And then I left you here, but I sent my spirit back to make sure you would know you are not alone. You are not by yourself. There's so many walking with you, you don't even see it. I wish you can see all the angels of the Lord that God has released on your behalf. There's an angel beating back darkness. There's another one beating back sickness. There's another one beating back mind trouble. There's another one beating back. I mean, you don't even know. They're warring for you right now. And that is because the verified Jesus, the one who has all power, sent some of that power to your house. And he sent some of that power to my house. And he sent it to his people. Where is a church that believes in the power? I need the people that believe. Where are you? Come on and praise him if you believe it. Come on and praise him if you believe it. Oh, come on, if you believe it, bless his name like you believe it. Bless him like you believe it. Hey, 
hey, hey, hey. Isn't it great that he would take the time to create limitations for himself, to wrap himself in a body, to limit himself from all of glory, and then so he would do that so that I could become limitless. In other words, I should be the one with limits. But he said, no, I'm going to come and die and get up and then give you that power so that all the things that were holding you captive no longer have power over you. I'm not saying they won't touch you, but the difference is they don't have power over you. And you need to understand that. I might slip, I might fall, I might mess up, but sin has no power over me. It can't rule my life. It might make me lose a day or two, but eventually the power of the resurrection is going to reach down in the very depths of the hell that I find myself in. And it's going to raise me it's going to raise me back up. I need for you to know the power of the resurrected Lord. He has all power. He has all power. It doesn't matter what the world is doing. He has all power. I refuse to not believe. I refuse to stop worshiping. I refuse to stop calling upon his name. My spirit knew it, but now my mind knows it. See, if you get my spirit and my mind on one accord, it's dangerous because I can be excited in my spirit about Jesus being Lord. But when I take my time and read the data that says I saw him and I touched him and he spoke to me, I don't need anything else. I serve a God that's been verified. I ain't messing with nobody else, but I don't think that guy that led the Islamic people to peace and all the wonderful things they believed in, but there's no record of him getting up out of his grave. I know that the guy over there with the little Buddha, they're all nice people. I ain't preaching against nobody. I ain't mad at you. I just want to make an announcement. Your God is still dead. Mine is alive. I just want to make an announcement. Yours went in the grave and didn't get up. But mine came up out of the grave. Somebody shot, he lives. Oh, demons are trembling right now. Let me tell you why they're trembling. Because they don't care if y'all shout on Easter. They don't care if we come to church dressed up, dressed down. They don't care about none of that. They don't care if the choir sings real good. They don't care if the babies do good. What they care about is that you know who you are. And he don't, them devils don't want you to know that you serve a Jesus that was verified. It's not just a story in the Bible. He was verified. And then when Paul went to the, not Paul, when John went to the Isle of Patmos, that was long time later. He was there by himself. And this same Jesus showed up on the island with him and began to prophesy to him about the things that were to come. Let me tell you about my Jesus. He's a bad somebody. He can do what he wants to do whenever he wants to do it. He can save whoever he wants to save. He can heal. Whatever is holding you, Jesus can break it. Whatever has got you bound up, he can unwrap you. I think that's why we had to know about the wrapping. We had to know that he was tied up so that he can demonstrate for us that the power of resurrection also unties stuff. It unties everything. I think I told you all this story, and I'm going to tell you one more time, and then I'm going to get out of here. We're going to stop talking. But this is my last story of today. But years ago, I told you all about this time. Darian had that. One of my babies had the little slinky thing, and he got it all mixed up in the basketball net. It was a mess. And I'm like, how am I supposed to get this out of here? He's looking at me, Mommy, can you please get it out? Can you please get it out? And I was like, oh, Lord, DJ. Okay, let me get it out. And I took my time and I unraveled.
unraveled and unraveled and unraveled and unraveled. And finally, I got it out. And I gave it to him. He said, oh, thank you, Mommy. Oh, thank you. And I was thinking about that. When I was looking at this, that story comes back to me often. And I said, Lord Jesus, Jesus was all wrapped up. And the power of God got him all out of there. And I said, Lord, have mercy. If me being an earthly parent can give a good gift to my child and can unwrap the mess that he made, oh, my God, what can you unwrap in my life? I think you can unwrap everything I've gotten myself into. You can unwrap me and get me out of it. Every crazy decision that I made that messed up my future, you can unwrap me and I can be fixed and you can put me on a path. Ain't no devil in hell got more power than my Jesus. Somebody shout his name. I feel an unwrapping. I feel an unwrapping. Somebody needs to get unwrapped today. Somebody say verify. Next time they ask you about Jesus, say, that ain't real. Say, oh, no, it's been verified. It's real. And say, well, the Bible's been tampered with, and it's probably not true. They probably made it up. I'm saying, you know what? Your mind's probably been tampered with, so... That's just you against me. You believe what you want, I'm gonna believe what I want. Here's what I'm gonna tell you, my Jesus works. Every time I call his name, he answers. Every time I need something, he responds. Oh my, I'm, I'm just telling you that he works. He, he says things that only he and I could have known. Have you ever had somebody walk up to you and start telling you stuff about your life and they don't know you? Who you think is telling you? That's Jesus, because he is alive. Okay, I gotta get y'all out of here. Woo, come on, let's just praise them together. Woo. Believing in Jesus secures my life of victory. I'm victorious not because of every good thing and great thing that I can see. I'm victorious because it's been guaranteed that I would be. It was spoken over you. And it was spoken over me. My mother tells me when she got in trouble, as they would say it back then, I'm, and I used to always tell them, I'm the best mistake you ever made. That was a joke between me and her. Because nobody else didn't want to be bothered with her. So I'm like, you better be glad you made this mistake because God gave you me. But she tells me the story of how when she looked at me and she said, God, I, I got four kids I can't take care of. I'm going to take care of this baby. And she was lamenting her new baby, me. And she said, God spoke to her and said, I have plans for her. And I will always take care of her. That's, that's what she told me. I started looking back over my life. When I was in my right mind, when I was out my mind, when I loved Jesus, when I didn't really love him, when I wasn't sure about this or that, when people forsook me, when I wasn't sure whether my right was my left or my left was my right, <clears throat> he always took care of me. And he had plans. I'm just telling you my story because you got your own. And I don't know what yours is, but I bet you if you look back over your life, you can see that God has been there the whole time. The whole time. Protecting you. Keeping you. Fellas, fellas, fellas. Y'all was her 10th man. The other nine got diseases. You didn't. In sin, and still God looking out for you. Ladies, 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 ladies. He, he had been everywhere all around the world and why, I, I. But look at you, you're here today. 
You ain't on no medicine. Come on, somebody needs to give God praise. This is real talk. Because I want you to remember, just take a moment and remember the hell and the dirt that God has brought us all up out of and kept us. It's no goodness of our own. Somebody took the same drugs you took and they're not here to talk about it. Somebody drank the same night you drink and they're not here to talk about it. Somebody went through the same things you went through and they're not here to talk about it. Why did God keep you? It's because he's got plans for your life. It's because he's got something that he wants to do. He is not done with you yet. If you don't mind helping me preach, I want you to look at somebody and tell them God ain't done with you. He is not done with you. He is not done. That's why you're here, because this verified Jesus is not done with you. Woo! Can we just go ahead and praise God now? I don't have nothing else to say. I'm so glad, I'm so glad Thomas didn't believe. I'm so glad. I'm so glad that God turns every moment to a lesson. Because every moment becomes a lesson. Because I was simply handing my information to the person at the airport. It was a simple moment. And the Lord rolled, back, rolled it all back. He said, you exist, but somebody had to prove it. He said, my existence is proven. And for people who struggle with intelligent design versus Big Bang theories and all that, it's okay because we, we both are operating in faith. I have faith that God did it. You have faith that nothing did it. I don't know. You could be right. I'm going to believe what I want to believe because I just don't believe nothing could create a system as immaculate as ours. Where the moon doesn't ever forget where it belongs. The sun never forgets where it's supposed to be. The ocean may overflow a little bit every now and then, but it goes right back. I mean, just some things have to make sense. That I need water to live, but I am water. Take water from me, I become dirt. <laughs> right now, my heart is beating, and so is yours, and we have no idea why. It's not plugged into anything. I'm designed to take in oxygen. The earth is designed to give me oxygen. Coincidence? I think not. My feet, my mind says I want to go there. My feet says I got a plan. Let's go. It's a simple plan. Put one foot in front of the other. And I can go wherever it is I want to go. I've learned how to master being in the air and undersea and on the water. Uh, I don't think nothing came up with all that. It's too, it's too profound. And then when this body has had enough, whether by my own hand or just Father Time, when it has had enough, it goes to sleep. And the ironic thing is that while my body goes to sleep, what is this immaterial part of me that exists? Where did it go? <sighs> when I take my last breath. I, I mean... Just pause for a minute. I, I'd like to say for me, all those things verify the existence of a mighty God. I'm just this kind of person. I can't eat nothing. I can't go nowhere. I can't be at the beach. I can't be at the mall. I can't be anywhere without becoming and living and breathing the presence of my Savior. I see him in all things. I see him in everything. I see when I see people. I was at a, a concert 
couple of days ago, I was at a concert recently, and there was a, it's a secular concert, and the people are doing their thing, they're doing their thing, and I'm listening, I'm watching, everybody's doing their thing, and I'm saying, everybody, you know what they're doing? They want to worship something, everybody does. We love sports players because we want to worship something. We want somebody to be greater than us. We have this desire for a demigod. There's got to be something that exists that's greater than me so that I can give my allegiance to it, so that I can fan for it, so that I can shout at it, so that I can defend it. That's that God spot. He put that in us because he wants us to see him and defend him and talk about him and shout his praises and give him glory for this thing called life. So he takes the time to give me life. And then he takes the time to give me eternal life. I don't want to live on this earth like it is forever. I'm already scared of it. It's getting weirder by the day. But I do like the idea of being with him forever. Let's pray. I want to do something. Those of you who are here at the altar, you're welcome to stay or you can return to your seat, whatever is comfortable for you. But if everybody would bow their heads and close their eyes, this is what I'd like to do. I just want to open up the altar to somebody, someone, some persons, some individual that says, you know, I never thought about any of this like this before. And maybe you're already a believer. Maybe you're on the fence. Maybe you're trying to decide. I want to invite you to the altar if you're here today and say, I want to make a conscious decision about this verified Jesus. I want to make a conscious decision. If you're here today, do me a favor and just make your way to the altar. I'm not going to ask you questions about whether or not it's a first decision or a, re a recommitment or whatever it is. I'm not, I don't feel to do that. I just feel to pray for you. I just feel to pray. I see some people coming this way. Can you all make your way towards me over here? Thank you. Come this way. Come on over. I just want to pray for you. Come on. Just come on. Come on. Nobody's watching. Your head should be bowed and your eyes should be closed. Come on. I see some people coming. Come on. Is this who you told me about? Oh, he's so sweet. I'm happy to see him. I'm so happy to see him. Come on. Yes, come. I don't want to stir you with emotion. I want you to think about this today. And even some of you who have been here the whole time, now I'm going to extend this to you to say, you know what? I got to deepen my walk with this verified Jesus. I got to deepen it. I got to get, there's another level of seriousness I need to add to it. Come on. Come on. You're who I'm here for today. That's it. No questions asked. No questions asked. No questions asked. I'm not laying hands today. I'm not coming out of the pulpit. I'm not doing any of that. No questions asked. Just prayer. That's all. Yes. I want to assure you that this Jesus, he releases us from things. Just the way Jesus was released from the prison of the tomb, we are released from things. Now, I also want to open it up to somebody who needs to be released in some area of your life. You feel like there's a binding on something going on with you. Just come. We're almost done. Thank you. I see you coming. Heads are bowed. Eyes are closed. We're not watching people today. Our eyes are on the Lord. Amen. Father, I thank you for these that have come. In this still moment, this very still moment, you're doing a work in the heart. That's what matters. It doesn't matter if we're jumping and running. What matters is what's happening in our hearts. I see you. You can still come. I see you. Even while I'm praying. Father, I thank you for each person that's coming towards me. I pray that you will break every fetter, release them from every chain, anything that's binding them, anything that's holding them back. Lord, the areas of power that they're not working in, in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, Alexis, join her for me. Join her. Reach out to her in prayer, this young, this young lady right here. Yes. In the name of Jesus. Lord, break our hearts to restore them back to you. Break us apart 
and then put us back together again. Make us new creatures in Christ Jesus for real. May we not just be churchgoers, but may we be Christians who sincerely love the Lord, who want to know his ways and his word, who want to walk up right before him. So I thank you for each person that has come. Sis in the orange, I see you, and the Lord sees you. And he's granting you the desires of your heart. In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name. Sis, right here in front of me with the bracelet, I see you when the Lord sees you. Can I get some prayer words to just join me in prayer now? Come on, just make a, just pray from where you are. Just pray in your seats where you're standing. Come on, I don't hear you. Where the prayer word is at? Pray out loud. Pray out loud in the name of Jesus. Ask God to, to fix some things and change some things in the name of Jesus. Yes, come on. Somebody's getting a breakthrough. Somebody's getting a breakthrough. Sister Cheryl, go. In the name of Jesus. Bernie, Elder Bernie, Elder Bernie. Mm -mm. Sister Cheryl, thank you, Jesus. Come on. Can I get some worship in the house? Come on, y'all. Worship the Lord with me. Worship the Lord with me. Come on, somebody's getting a breakthrough. What if God set this whole service up just for her? Works for me. Thank you, Jesus. He took the fall and thought of me above all. He was crucified, laid behind the stone. You little down, rejected and alone, like a rock, trampled on the ground. You took the fall. Rejected and alone, like a rose, trampled on the ground. You took the fall and brought me above all. Okay, we're done. They came. Now, everybody, just lift your hands where you are. And just receive all that God has for you by opening up your mouth and giving him worship. Come on, everybody, join in the worship now. Join in the worship. You lived to die. Here's what I asked the Lord for today. I didn't ask him to give me a fancy message. I didn't ask him to increase my popularity, get more views. I asked him if he would please fill the altar with souls. That's what I asked. Without question, about why? Is it your first time? Is it your second time? I just wanted to see some people come to the altar and say, I want the verified Jesus to take control of my life. When it's all said and done, everything else means nothing. 
this is what matters, that he was crucified, buried, and wrapped. That's the profundity of it, that he was buried, sealed, put away for good, and he broke out of that. Anything that has tried to bury you and put you away for good, you can break out of it today. In Jesus' name. So I thank you for your people, Lord. Continue to bless your people. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen, amen, and amen. As you go back to your seats, go back praising God. He was crucified. Laid behind the snow. You If you don't have a church home, our doors are open to you. If you want to make this home, you say, I got to come home. I got to make this church my home. I need to come home. Our doors are open to you right now while the song continues to play. Make this your home. If you're here today, come on. We want to welcome you on this wonderful, glorious Resurrection Sunday. If you're here in the building, you say, I need to make this home. I need to make this home. This needs to be my church. And if you don't want to do it now, we understand. We'll be here after service. You can walk up to us. We'll be right here waiting for you. Somebody coming? Oh, okay. I can't see. Like a rose trampled on the ground. Come on. I need some rejoicing. Look at these beautiful ladies. You took the fall. Oh, look at all these beautiful ladies coming. And thought of me. Come on. Look at here. Bless you. Yes. Above all. I see somebody else coming. Come on, y'all. Give God the praise. He was crucified, laid behind the stone. Can we give God an ovation for these ladies here today? God bless y'all. All All so beautiful. Our intake team, these beautiful women of God and this wonderful man, they are waiting to take y'all. If you need to grab your things, let us know. We'll help you get to your things. But they'll wait for you if you want to grab your things. You can do that. And y'all can just wait for them until they capture their things. Somebody went to get her things. If y'all would just wait for her. Amen. What a beautiful day. He was crucified Lay behind the stone Look at you, girl. We waiting on you. Yes, take your time. We are waiting on you. Amen. Rejected and alone like a rose. If you have a gift, come on and bring it now. Trampled on the ground, you took the fall. Maybe you came in late and you want to give now. And thought of me. He was crucified, laid behind the stone. You lived to die, rejected and alone, like a rose, trampled on the ground. Hello. You took the fall. Oh. 
above all powers, above all thrones, above all kingdoms the world has ever known, above all wisdom and all the ways of man. Give him money. Rejected and oh my God. Praise God, family. The verified Jesus. If you believe it, put your hands together and give God a thank you. Hallelujah. You're stamped from the beginning, Pastor said. Verified. Hallelujah. At this time, like to welcome our first time visitors. So if you are visiting with us for the first time here in the sanctuary, would you just wave your hand so that we can acknowledge you? Praise God. Thank you. What a blessing. And to our online family, if you would welcome the online visitors as well, we pray that this verified word touched you and that you will come back and fellowship with us. Family, there's a number of ways that we can stay connected to one another. We are on all the social media channels. We have a wonderful app. Please let the office know what your email is so you can get the alerts. Amen? Has this not been a wonderful Resurrection Sunday? Hallelujah. Again, for those children, K through 6, who are going to participate in the Easter egg hunt, if you go to the social GA in the LEC when we're done. Amen, children. Amen. Amen. Pastor, have a seat. Hallelujah. All right, family, would you stand? Say it like you mean it. Hands lifted up. Now unto him who is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all we can ask or think according to the power that worketh within us by Christ Jesus in this church world without end throughout all the generations. And we all say as one family, amen. Family, go in peace.